which was called Lysenkoism. And that was something that was done in the Soviet era. And that's when science had been hijacked by the government in the Soviet Union. And I call that Obama's role model, Joseph Stalin. Science was hijacked by the government in the Soviet Union under Obama's role model, Joseph Stalin. For more than three decades, the Soviet scientific community entered a dark age now known as Lysenkoism. It was a period when all scientific discovery and advancement halted and regressed thanks to the political dominance over Soviet science by a man named Trofim Lysenko. Now, I remember studying genetics in the late 1950s at Queens College in New York. I was a young kid, and genetics was a huge subject at that time. And we were all fascinated by learning the structure of DNA. James Watson and Francis Crick put out the double helix ten years later. It was one of the most exciting periods for science, not only in my lifetime, but perhaps in everyone's lifetime. But there was one place in the world where Watson and Crick's great accomplishment was not being celebrated. That was in the Soviet Union under Stalin, where people were forbidden to believe that genes exist. Let me finish the sentence. Just like people in Obama's America are forbidden to believe that man-made climate change doesn't exist. Marxists have to stamp out the truth or no one would tolerate their rule. That's why Stalin needed a fake scientist to push Lysenkoism in the USSR and why Obama needs fake scientists to push global warming in the USS of A. Back in a minute on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. So again, I want to talk about Lysenkoism and who he was. He was a um, uh, an evil scientist, not even a scientist, he was a propagandist in the Soviet era who would not even acknowledge that genetics existed. And people were for forbidden to believe that genes existed in the 1950s, just like people in America today are not allowed to even say that man-made climate change uh, uh, doesn't exist. Obama tries to make you fear saying it for fear of ridicule. He wants to make believe that there's no contrary evidence. And so they used the fake scientists to push Lysenkoism in those days, just as Obama uses pimps in the science world today uh, and prostitutes to push global warming lies, every last one of them, every last one of them is on the federal payroll through grants and contracts. There's not an exception to what I just said to you. Lysenko rose to prominence during the 1930s. The Soviet agricultural system was dying and people were starving because of communism. Russia had once been an exporter of wheat. But after Stalin collectivized the farms, production plummeted and people starved. And so they perverted science in the Soviet Union as a direct result of the economic failures of communism. The pattern might sound familiar. First, Stalin attacked the middle class farmers, calling them kulaks. He said they were exploiters. He accused them of robbing from the people by charging too much for the produce of the land. Does this sound familiar? Does it sound like the fairness doctrine? Or does it sound like white privilege, the litany you hear from Barack Obama Sharpton and the brigades of spineless sea creatures on the left about fairness? I'll tell you more. You can read about it yourself if you want in Government Zero. When I come back, an expert on global temperatures, a real one. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE-SAVAGE. Everybody else has taken climate change really seriously. They think it's a really big problem. Yeah. It spans political parties. I mean, you, you, you travel around Europe and you talk to leaders of governments and the opposition, and they are arguing about a whole bunch of things. One thing they're not arguing about is whether the science of climate change is real and whether or not we have to do something about it. Okay, so the silk tongue, sunk, the silk tongue snake is pushing the big lie. I told you about Lysenkoism in the 1950s in the Soviet Union. This is identical to Lysenkoism. And joining us right now is a real climatologist with a Ph.D. in statistics from Cornell, a climatological scientist, a former cryptologist for the U.S. Air Force. His name is Dr. Matt Briggs. He joins us from Manhattan. Dr. Briggs, welcome to the Savage Nation. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. So, Dr. Briggs, the president says the science of the climate change 
is accepted around the world. You and I know that's not true. Well, it's true in the sense that every scientist knows the climate on Earth always changes and always will change. That's a fact. <laughs> okay, but where is it not, where, where is it not true? It, it's not true in that we do not know how much of an influence we have on the climate. It's indisputable that we as humans have some influence on the climate. But as I said before, aardvarks also do, and so do radishes and polar bears. Every species on the planet influences the climate. We just don't know how much. If we did know how much, the models that we have created to describe the climate would be accurate, but they're wildly inaccurate. They've predicted that the temperatures would increase and increase and increase some more. But over the last 20 years or so, the temperature has remained relatively flat. Therefore, we know there is no problem with global warming. And we know well, that... What about, we what about sea, sea, sea levels? Has, have sea levels risen around the world? In various spots, maybe a millimeter or so. In other spots, they've gone down. Over the entire globe, uh, sea ice is up. Right now, sea ice is up. All the pronouncements that uh, we were going to have ice-free uh, arctics and so forth were completely and wildly in error. It's just not true. Mm -hmm. All right, so we, you and I both know that 97% of the world's scientists who agree with President Obama are, are basically receiving government grants and contracts. Isn't that true? Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the case. Uh, most of the scientists who make their living off of this have to agree with the government. The government puts these grants out, and they basically ask for certain results in advance, and uh, people go after these. It's an immense amount of money. Uh, one person tracked this. Uh, I, I wrote an article about the, this at thestream.org. One person tracked this over the last 10 years. Uh, various governments have spent $79 billion uh, to, to study these things, to promote these things. So if someone put out a grant or a contract to disprove man's impact uh, on, on temperature, they would probably ne never get funded, correct? If someone wrote a grant like that, they probably never would get funded. That's absolutely true. But we don't even well. need to. We... You and I sitting right here can, uh, you know, deduce that the models are in error. Therefore, the theory that mankind is dangerously harming the climate is also in error. All the predictions that they have made over the last 20 years or so have fallen short. There's not an increasing number of storms. There's not a vast sea level rise that's going to sink these small islands. The sea ice has not melted. The polar bears are doing just fine. Everything they said has been wrong. Yet they're still doing this climate conference, or global warming conference, I should say. Well, I keep quoting the Vostok ice core samples as evidence to the contrary of what Obama's putting out and the others. And then I wanted to talk about the false data. I call this the biggest science scandal ever. And we all know that there's a degree of, uh, of uh, even the most skeptical person out there would have to agree that there is no warming trend at all. In fact, they've altered the data so they've actually had the audacity to turn cooling trends into warming trends. This has been studied, hasn't it, Dr. Briggs? It absolutely has. The, the problem is, is uh, there's more than one way to measure temperature on Earth. The most reliable methods that we have are these space-based, satellite-based platforms and they show like i say no real change over the past 20 years unfortunately we don't have satellites that go back uh you know further than like 1980 19 late 1970s so we have to use land-based measurements now the funny thing about these land-based measurements are every time Every time they come out with a new forecast that the temperature is going to be higher, they look at the actual land-based temperatures and they see that they don't match up to the forecast. And then they go and they say, you know what, since these land-based measurements are just a statistical algorithm, they manipulate them and adjust them, and uh, lo and behold, they're warmer. Every time they're warmer when they go and manipulate these things. That, you know, Dr. Dr. Briggs, it's, frust it's frustrating to anyone with a degree in, in any analytical field. You have your Ph.D. from Cornell. I have my Ph.D. from UC Berkeley in a different field entirely. But I can read data. Those of us who can actually read data understand that you can ma manipulate data if you want to. And just as we have junk journalism, people should understand that there's also junk scientists. Science, and they should also understand that just as Lysenko in the Soviet Union 
had an army of state journalists to smear and discredit anyone who opposed his crank theories. Man-made climate change proponents and the O administration received the same kind of support from the mainstream media. Do you agree or disagree with that, with that allegation of mine? It's 100 percent true. The, 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 take the recent case of Senator Whitehouse, this Rhode Island senator. Oh, God. A big believer in this stuff. He was working with this guy down at uh, George Mason University, Shukla, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, who takes a half a million dollars a year of government money to pay for a part-time salary for he and his wife. And he wrote this letter asking President Obama and the Justice Department to prosecute skeptical scientists like myself under the RICO Act. Yeah, I saw yeah. that. And it, tur and it turned out he and his wife were scamming the government for millions of dollars a year, correct? Well, about a half a million dollars a year. Isn't he from India? Wasn't the wife or the daughter at an institute in India that was receiving some of this money? Uh, I think so. I think so. So, in other words, not only did he want to get away with the money that he was r raking in, but he wanted to shut down anyone who disagreed with this theory and have them prosecuted under RICO statutes. That's how far we've fallen uh, as a nation. Junk science, junk journalism, and God forbid this ever happened in this country. The fact of the matter is it didn't happen quite yet. And so that's why we still have a free press, regardless of which party is in power. The media is supposed to be skeptical of the government at all times. And that's what we're doing here on this program every day through me and, and my guests when it, when it applies. I believe that the junk science is overwhelming the average mind and they don't even know what to believe. So let's cut to the chase, Dr. Briggs. What is it, what is it that Obama and the others want once they get their way? Isn't it sort of a global tax to pay for their schemes? They call it a global carbon tax. That's exactly what they want, which is a tax on economic output. They want global redistribution. Angela Merkel said at the opening of this climate conference, they hope to do what they couldn't do back in Copenhagen, which is to redistribute $100 billion a year from countries like ours to leaders of other countries who are supposedly suffering under non-existent global warming. That's the real... Angela, Angela Merkel is the one who's flooding her country with illegal aliens from Syria, number one, against the will of the people in every poll. Angela Merkel comes from a communist background in East Germany, doesn't she? Well, I... I, well, let's, that, I know all about this. Angela Merkel is a re-emergence of the ex-Soviet uh, ex period in Germany's history, but let's put her aside. This is a very dangerous period when these, when these demagogues like Merkel, like Obama, like the others would use fake science to lie to the people, to tax people based on carbon. So tell the average person about carbon for a minute, Dr. Briggs. You're a scientist. You know that this is a, a complete ruse. It's completely fraudulent. Why are they focusing on carbon dioxide when it's the wrong gas to focus on to begin with? because it's easy to blame, because it's easy to trace back to economic output. All life on Earth is carbon-based. We can't ha carbon is not pollution. Carbon dioxide is not pollution. Carbon <laughs> dioxide is plant food. You know, it's absurd <laughs> the way they're talking about these things. It's not, it has nothing to do with science. It's unscientific to the nth degree, yet nobody challenges them on it because what, what it is, is they don't understand any of this science. All of these leaders, they don't really understand it. They don't really care. All they care is they could find enough scientists to back them up. What they really care about and what they really believe in is the solution to global warming. That's what they really want. They want the solution. They don't care about the science itself. Dr. Briggs, what's your website for people who want to read your work? Stream.org. Stream.org. Dr. Matt Briggs, thanks for being with us on the Savage Nation. Thanks for having so let me. Thank you, Dr. Briggs. Always a pleasure. Now, I want to conclude by reading what happened in the Soviet Union when it finally came to an end, the Lysenkoism, from the last pages of Government Zero's chapter on this. Lysenkoism eventually came to an end in the Soviet Union, as it inevitably had to. Scientific reality can be denied for only so long. Eventually, the people themselves just stop believing the lies, regardless of the state media, and force the Khrushchev regime to turn its back on Lysenko. Lysenko was eventually stripped of all of his power, and real scientists who had always rejected his crackpot theories stopped being persecuted. All of this happened when the people themselves refused to go along 
with the government nonsense that led to one crisis after another.